Good morning, everybody. Glad you're back. I recently put together a video on common mistakes with pitching plex tents, and it occurred to me that I should probably put together a couple of companion videos for how to actually pitch those tents to go along with my common mistakes video. So today I'm going to run through how to set up the triplex, which is very similar to the duplex, the only difference being that the triplex has two additional mid panel pullouts on it. So if you have the duplex and you're new to setting it up, this will still definitely help you out. If you happen to be a plex solo user and you're looking for help on how to set that up, keep an eye out for a video on how to set up the Plex Solo in the next week or so. So with that, I'm going to put on some appropriate attire, uh, grab my gear, and then we'll head on over to the state park and we'll get started. Real quick, we wanna run through the gear that you need. So we have two trekking poles. I use Z-Pax trekking poles, but you can use whatever you would like. Up next, we have stakes. For the triplex, we need 12 stakes in total, eight for the main tie-out points, and then four for the mid-panel tie-outs. I like a good Y-beam stake for the main tie-out points, and I use MSR groundhogs. And then for the panel poles, I use these Vargo titanium shepherd hooks. Obviously, we're gonna need our tent as well. And then optionally, you may want a ground sheet of some kind. I prefer Tyvek because I find that it's way more durable than Polycro, but it's entirely up to you what you wanna use or if you wanna use one at all. Z-Pax does say that the one ounce per square yard DCF that they use in their floors should be good for at least a through hike. I found a decently level spot to start working with here, at least good enough for today. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my ground sheet laid out and then we'll start setting up the triplex. Now that we have our shelter laid out nicely, the first thing that we want to do is stake out one of these long edges. And you want to do it medium tight, so not too tight, not too loose. The reason being is that we're first going to stake it out in a straight line, and then when we stake out the other side, it's going to pull the whole shelter over and make these lines come out on a 45 degree angle. So you want to make sure that there's just enough slack that you're able to do that. One thing that I want to point out here really quick is that I like to pull the lines to about three quarter length from the line lock. And now that we have this side done, we're just going to go ahead and repeat the same process on the other side here. Now that I have the four corners of my shelter staked out, I'm going to take a minute to go back around and readjust the stakes to make sure that all of the corners have lines coming out at 45 degrees. This is going to be the step that's going to make or break your pitch, so you really want to go around and make sure that you have a nice rectangular footprint to work with so that the rest of your setup goes smoothly. Next, I'm going to adjust my trekking pole to 122 centimeters or 48 inches. For the lines on the peak, I like to leave just enough slack so that I have enough to pull on later when I want to tighten it up. And then once the pole's inserted, I'm going to stake out the peak as well. And when I stake out this line, I'm going to take it as far out as I possibly can so that I can get as much tension on the ridge as possible. One thing to point out is that it's very rare for the pole height to actually match up exactly with how high the tent wants to go. So you have a couple of options. You can either adjust the pole height a little bit or you can adjust the lines around the perimeter to give it a little bit more slack. Totally up to you, but again, it's very rare that it's actually gonna happen that the pole height is gonna be exact just because the ground's probably not level. Now that I've got this side taken care of, I'm gonna go ahead and repeat the process on the other side, and then I wanna go around and close all of the doors. It's really important that you close up the doors as you're tightening down the tent, just because the tension that's applied from the doors to the shelter is going to affect the pitch. The only time that you may not wanna close up the doors before you tighten everything down is if you know for a fact that you're gonna leave the doors open all night and you wanna have a nice tight pitch. But around here, there's pretty much always the chance that it might rain, so I like to make sure that I have the option to close up the doors at night if I want to. And now I'm gonna go ahead and tighten up my ridge. I'm actually gonna grab the trekking pole and pull it towards me as I tension up the line. Now 
Next, I'm gonna stake out these edge tie-outs. I like to do these towards the end just because they don't really get a whole ton of tension on them. They're really just there to sort of flatten out the shelter wall and yes, to reinforce things in strong wind and stuff like that. But for the most part, the majority of the load is being taken by these corner tie-outs as well as the peaks. And the trick with these is you really wanna stake them out in such a way that they are just following the direction of the panel and we don't wanna over tension them. And then finally, we wanna go ahead and stake out these mid panel tie outs. And the trick with these is that you wanna pull them up and away from the shelter wall at a 90 degree angle and then tighten up the slack. You don't wanna try and pull them straight down or parallel to the shelter wall because all you're really gonna do is just stretch out the shelter fabric over time. Our tent is all set up at this point so we can go around and just tension any lines that we need to just to make sure that everything is nice and tight. It's really important not to over tighten the lines though. You really just wanna tug on the line lock a little bit with your hands to see if there's any play. And if so, just tighten up those lines just a little bit. Again, you don't wanna over tighten them because you don't wanna risk damaging the fabric. You'll know that you've done a good job if the bathtub is raised up roughly eight inches from the ground. The panels are nice and smooth with no noticeable creases. The top of the bathtub floor is either even width or slightly above the perimeter of the fly, and the doors are mostly closed, although some spread at the bottom is normal. At this point, our tent is looking good and we can go ahead and start fluffing up our quilt. If there's any setup tips that you feel like I've missed, feel free to go ahead and drop them down in the comments below. And if you haven't yet, go ahead and check out my video on common mistakes with setting up Plex tents. Thank you so much for watching and I will catch you in the next one.